Welcome to Brainy Face Project. This is Michael from BinaryCafe.com. This is a series of videos for subscribers. You know who you are. So let's just go ahead and jump into the video here. This is a review of the Sony DSC HX300 camera from Sony, which is the successor to the HX200V. And before that, you had the 100V, the HX1, the H50. There's been a long line of cool bridge cameras, which have really powerful zoom lenses, and that's why you buy a camera like this. It comes with the standard battery, you've got an AC adapter, a neck strap, a lens cap, and then also a micro USB cable that allows you to transfer files back and forth between your computer, but also is used to charge the camera as well. And that's a little USB 2.0 cable and the camera does USB 2.0, it doesn't do 3. Now when you get the camera out of the box you're going to look at that big 50x and go wow that's an incredible amount of zoom and it is. The 35 millimeter equivalent is 24 millimeter for wide angle on up to 1200 millimeter which for the money is a ridiculous amount of zoom. It is so much fun. It's got cool features like an articulating screen which makes it easy to shoot video if you're in a crowd. You can hold it up over your head. You know, you can just do all these crazy angles. It's really, really cool. Um, when you pop the little battery hatch open, you're going to notice that it's got a different size battery port. So unfortunately, you can't use the same battery that you had if you owned previous versions of the camera. But the little battery does a good job. It's a pretty decent capacity and is the same battery that's used on the Sony point and shoot RX100. I'm a huge fan of that camera. I absolutely love it so I can swap batteries back and forth. The weight of the camera is really comfortable. It's about one pound seven ounces. You've got this grip on the right hand side which allows you to operate with one hand and you'll notice that the manual focus ring on this camera is also larger than previous models and it is way more precise. I used to get frustrated using the manual focus ring on the other cameras but this one dials in pretty precisely and I'm not as frustrated with this one so it's much more intuitive. So the camera itself is a little bit larger. You'll notice when you look at the front that the lens cap doesn't have a string to attach it to the front, but oh, look at that. You finally have a threaded adapter on the lens itself so you can plug in finally a UV filter or whatever other filter as long as it's 55 millimeter you can put it onto the camera so it doesn't come with a UV filter you have to buy that separately but um, I stuck one of those on the camera immediately there's a little button on the side to pop the flash up so you can use that in low light situations and on previous versions like the HX 200V and 100V there's this little sensor that could detect when you held the camera up to your face and it would switch back and forth between the electronic viewfinder in the screen they got rid of that and that's a good thing because that thing used to drive me crazy it would be like your uh, your little screen was glitching out but now they got rid of that so you just use the button to switch back and forth lots of dials uh, you've got a jog dial on the back to switch back and forth uh, parameters for different modes a focus button custom button and then you also have your your program mode, your aperture mode, shutter mode, and manual mode in addition to some other modes that make it really easy to shoot great pictures. They're the intelligent auto mode and superior auto mode. And then you also have scene mode which allows you to dial things in to do cool effects for background defocus or if you're shooting sports or food or pets or all sorts of different things. So lots of different modes on this camera but don't get overwhelmed by it. You can just stick it into the intelligent auto mode and it'll take care of most of it. But the great thing is, is that this camera allows you to change parameters if you want to so you can learn a lot about photography with a, a great and powerful lens. The ports are different. You've got a micro USB for charging and data transfer and then it's got a micro HDMI for displaying the content on an HD television and you'll want to do that as well if you have a 3D TV you can do some 3D pictures as well on this camera. The memory card, you can take uh, an SDHC or SDXC, but if you prefer the Sony uh, memory sticks, it'll also take those as well, so those just pop right in. And faster is better, especially because you can do high definition video, and you can do AVCHD video on this camera 
at 60 frames per second NTSC and up to 28 megabits per second. Now that's the same as previous models of the camera, but the, the key factor here is the fact that the image stabilization is better on this camera, so the video when you're zooming in actually doesn't bounce around quite as much. The barrel of the camera has the 35 millimeter equivalent for the zoom, so you can go from 24 millimeter on up to 1200 millimeter, so that'll actually show that to you on the lens, and you can zoom in and out by using the lever or by using the focus ring. These still pictures were taken from the same spot. The first one was just a, a standard picture, the second was 50x optical zoom, and that last one, 100x digital zoom. Here's another example. tree. Then I used 50x optical zoom, and then 100x digital zoom. So when you're using digital zoom, it's actually using software inside the camera, but standing in the same spot, you can zoom in to see things that you're unable to see with the naked eye, and it's absolutely incredible. I just was in my backyard taking video and pictures of birds, and I got this picture of this cardinal by using the burst mode on the camera, and it shot 10 frames per second, and this is another example of that. So there's so much you can do with the lens on this camera, but the different modes is, is so much fun. Low light is pretty deep decent. It still has a small sensor, but the quality is pretty good. It's got different modes like this background defocus where it'll actually blur the background automatically inside the camera. Lots of other features. You've got watercolor, illustration modes. Again, these effects take place inside the camera. You can filter out all colors except for red, green, blue, or yellow, depending on the uh, particular color that you choose. And I love this mode. This is a mini mode, which is like a tilt shift, which makes things look smaller. These Sony cameras have had this panorama panorama mode, which I absolutely love. They've added additional features in each version of the camera. This camera has 360 degree panorama mode, so you can literally do a full circle, but it also has this mode where you can do color filtering as well. Like in this mode, I left just red. That was applied dynamically in camera. This picture of the full moon done handheld by using the camera in uh, still mode. Absolutely just phenomenal. I can't believe it's like having a telescope in your hand. And then if you use the manual focus ring, this is some video that I did. You can actually blur out your subjects for uh, creative effects there. That's a lot of fun. This zoom, how do I even, what can I say about this? Just look at the distance. We had these cable cars up above us. I couldn't even see the kids up in the cable car, but when I zoomed in, I could get all of the detail, and then you can just basically pull out to get that wide angle shot. I couldn't read the text on these signs. I could barely see the signs. They were so far away. I zoomed in. I was running video. You pull out, so you can go from this 1200 millimeter out to 24 millimeter and the, it's just absolutely incredible. How far away do you think I was from this guy? Uh, maybe, I don't know, a couple hundred feet or so? Check this out. Yeah, it's just absolutely incredible how the 50x optical zoom works. And it is, it's better than the previous versions of the camera. The image stabilization is just, um, it's just better. Look at this shot of the full moon this video here, zooming in on the moon to the point where you can literally see craters on the moon. And this is, again, this was handheld with image stabilization here. This, I didn't even have a tripod. Uh, the camera shoots, as I mentioned before, at 60 frames per second. So if you've got high speed action, you can get that. It's going to capture that really nicely. You can adjust the different settings on the camera so you can shoot at different bit rates, or you can even shoot in MP4 mode if you're just going straight to the web. But for me, this is the best camcorder that I've ever owned because it's got a 50x optical zoom on top of a camera that does high def video. And you can do stuff like this. You can see the bird's beak and eye. You could barely even see the bird if you're far away. 
and just exploring my own backyard and neighborhood was just like opening up a whole new world. Um, and I've had the HX 100 V and 200 V and maybe it's just because, you know, I'm in a different city now I'm out in the country, but, um, you know, this camera just is just so much fun in terms of doing video. So, there are features that it does not have. It does not have GPS. So if you nice. like to have global positioning system to be able to record your location, you don't have that on the HX300. Um, it's got a different battery and it doesn't have an attached lens cap, but it has the threaded lens up at the front so you can do your filters and it's got 50X optical zoom, which for me, just it's a no brainer. This camera is the best camcorder I've ever owned and has a lot of fun features for still. So anyway, I'm going to wrap it up now. So thanks for watching and you know where to go. If you have more questions, binarycafe.com. Thanks for watching.